Hello everybody, please check out the description box for all the nice links, drop a like, subscribe, click the bell icon if you like the content, check out the top right eye for even more nice links. Today is all about collision in the simple game series. We have a player which just jumps all the way down, 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 down. As you saw there, it went by pretty fast, but we don't have any collision at all. So what I thought we'd start with is some collision with the screen. To do that, I just want to visualize to you how that works. I have a SFML tutorial on this. There are links in the comment section for the SFML tutorial series you can check that out but otherwise i'll just give you a very simple tutorial here so look at this imagine this being our sprite our player is contained within this box that's how it looks pretty much it's just a rectangle with a bunch of pixels in it that looks like a player but there we have this the top left is what we always calculate our positions from so you should know this by now the top left is our x and y right here but we want to check our bottom of the player against the bottom of the screen right so how do we get the bottom of the screen well that's the height of the screen Screen, isn't it so the height of the screen should be touching or colliding with the bottom of our player which is in turn the top left plus the height of the player so whatever our position is in the world here that position plus the height will always yield the bottom of the player wherever we are that will be the bottom of the player so you take the position plus the height that's the bottom now we want to check if that ever passes or is equal to the bottom of the screen so if it comes outside like this we're gonna push it back up to where the screen is so to do that we need to check the y position plus the height if that is greater than the size of the the height of the screen or the window and to do that then we're just gonna place the bottom of the player at the bottom of the screen to do that we need to place the player right here okay at the at the edge of the screen the bottom of the screen so window height minus the height of the player which will push it up here Hopefully you saw that, rewind that and watch it again if you didn't understand, but that's what we're gonna do. To do that, to accomplish it, we're gonna have to create a few functions here which are gonna help us out. Firstly, go to game.h and I wanna create an update function here. I wanna create a update void update collision, sorry, collision and define that function. We're not gonna fill it anything in that yet. In the CPP file, it will just be there empty. We need to create a few things in our player here before we can do that. So let me just go ahead into player.h and and define a few functions um, that we're gonna need. Not define them, sorry, we're gonna declare them here. We're gonna create a section modifiers and we need to access a few things. We need to access the global bounds of the player and though to do that, we need to get a const sf float rec get global bounds const that gets the global bounds. We need to reset the player's velocity once we reach the bottom of the screen. We can set the position, of course, to top, but if the velocity is high, you're gonna get kind of a jittery thing. So you wanna make sure your velocity is zero as soon as you touch the bottom of the screen. Let's do that. Let's make a void reset velocity y. Very, very simple. Don't make any cons here or anything like that. Just keep it like that. And then we're gonna actually set the position of the player. Void set position float cons float x cons float y so setting the position is very simple as well let's define all of these three just real quickly the float rect will get by saying this sprite dot get global bounds this will return like the bounds of the sprite now hopefully you know what that is uh, after working with it in other series, in other games in this series. But basically it returns to you the position as well as the height and the width of the sprite. So that is four values, X, Y, height or width and height. So to do that, we just have to create a simple function. Now we're gonna set the position. This is also very easy and reset the velocity in one go. Let's define both of these functions. Jump into your CPP file for player and you'll have your functions right here. Setting the position is very simple. This is sprite.set position it's already there in the sprite class so we just have to call that the reset velocity is also very simple this velocity dot y equals 0 0.f these things in combination will give us a nice collision to the bottom of the screen now let us go into our update collision let's do an if statement here and check for that collision towards the bottom collision bottom of a screen bro yes my main real nice then in here Let's start the checks. Let's say this player dot get global bounds dot top. That is our top of the player. Okay, our Y coordinate for the player. We're gonna make sure that the top plus the global bounds of Y. So get your Y right here, height. So Y plus the height 
will give me the bottom of the player first step and we're going to check not comma if that is greater if it's greater than this window dot size sorry dot y there you go now that's better once you do that the check will be there this will go through this will be perfect now we need to set the player's position this player dot set position but we're gonna get this player's global bound first for the x coordinate which will be left it's called left so let me place that there and say left to make this easier on the eyes i'm gonna do that to retain the x coordinate is very important because we're only going to change the y velocity and y coordinate y position not the x so retain the x position also before you do this do set reset velocity sorry this player reset velocity y to just make it stop and then we'll set the position to where it should be so set it the y coordinate should be at this window dot get size dot y minus the height of the player minus the height of the player this will place me at the bottom of the player right at the edge of the screen at the bottom edge of the screen and the velocity is zero so we're not going to keep falling down too much all your functions this update collision i'm going to do that after update player all the animations everything and you'll see that our player lands nicely on the floor now we can't jump just yet and we can't run to the left because we haven't created that but for now that is fine good now we have some bottom collision with the screen our player actually has gravity but we have some bottom collision what we're going to do is we're going to create a new class here and we're going to call it tile and tile is going to be the class that contains all the stuff for our tiles now we have collision with the screen we need collision with tiles as well that's very important in a platformer so we can jump on them jump from them collide with them all kinds of stuff so that will be our base class it will contain a lot of things and then we're going to create another class which is going to be called tile map and this class is going to contain everything that has to do with the map so you'll add tiles to the tile map but we're going to close tile map for now because it's not really important as of yet we are going to just work with the tile first so open up your tile.cpp here and your tile.h and we'll just create a skeleton for this to work with in the next video to so create a sf sprite here sprite and add a private section just like that and add a public section just like we always do and in here we're gonna have a sprite we're also gonna check if they are damaging and damaging means if you touch them if they give you any damage if they cause any damage to the player that's very important to know so those things we'll have we'll have a constructor as well of course and the constructor is a little special because what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep a texture in our tile map and that texture sheet is gonna contain all the tiles that we can use but in the tile we're only gonna use a piece of that so to do that combination in the constructor what you need to do is you need to create a sf texture reference just to force it and you can call it texture sheet if you want to make it extra clear and then you'll make a interact not float rect interact texture rect of course the boolean for bool damaging equals false if you don't want it to be damaging by default so there you go that's a nice little constructor for you guys you're gonna need something here you're gonna need a const sf uh, what's it called float rect get global bounds of course that's always important to get from one of these classes so we're just going to define this and we're also going to define the constructor go ahead go into your tile.cpp and you have all your stuff here we'll do this sprite dot get global bounds very nice very nice also what we need to do is create some void update function here and void render function here boom very 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 easy very easy and then you have everything you have to do i'm just going to copy this render target thing and place it into tile.h here like that and define all of these and let's render like that go to the cpp and just check everything is here very nice let's say target dot draw this sprite like that and then update will be update and the tile constructor is pretty easy this sprite dot set texture sheet this sprite dot set texture rect to texture rect make sure it's rect and not sheet and then we'll say this damaging is damaging we'll do that in here damaging damaging and to make it extra cool let's make it a const bool because it will not change throughout the game and that's why we can define it in here done done and done and once everything catches up 
everything should be fine no errors and you'll have a bunch of things of course always run your game before you end it to make sure everything is fine now you have an animating character here and it looks good thank you guys for sticking with me thanks for watching these videos please check out the links i put in the description box top right i also in the comment section drop a like subscribe and the bell icon is nice because then you can see when i put out a new video so thank you so much for supporting me thanks for watching these videos take care i'll see you in the next one Bye bye